After the Great Depression and the destruction of World War II, the U.S. sought to re-establish financial and social stability through consumerism. President Truman auctioned off the socialized infrastructure of wartime to private companies that replaced it with a society stratified by capitalism. The shopping center became America's mecca, a sanctum for personal transcendence through the sacred appliances and commodities sold by corporations for the home. Modernist philosophy and design became the prayer of liberation, an omnipotent belief in the ever-improvement of the product and that the consumption of the product can and would ever improve our lives. These ideas were perpetuated by the sermons of advertising, which were injected into our lives via the home TV, an invention once sown by the privilege, now a staple of the nuclear family. By the 50s, more Americans no longer defined themselves by their religion, but defined themselves by their possessions. The individual was replaced by the consumer, and thus the children of God were adopted by General Motors. Consumerism has grown exponentially since the 50s and has embedded itself in popular culture. We identify with the things we own and constantly must replenish those things to satiate our current standing in the pseudo-evolving landscape of commercialism. In fashion, it's normal for people to wear clothing smothered in logos, to identify as a heady boy or a Chanel woman, and to constantly replace old but perfectly wearable garments with new styles season after season. The zeitgeist of the modern age is the product. It's on your TV, in your favorite stores, and in conversations with your friends and family. Today, corporations control culture, whether you like it or not. In a hundred years, our generation will be defined by iPhones, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon, not by the individual. The counterculture of the 50s recognized this phenomenon happening to their generation and sought to rebel against it through art, a movement that came to be known as pop art. Pop artists saw that the world around them was dominated by consumerism and so depicted that world quite literally in galleries and museums once filled with modernist works of grandeur and utopianism. They made art for the 1% that represented the 99%. Richard Hamilton, one of the first pop artists, famously defined pop art as being popular, transient, expendable, low-cost, mass-produced, young, witty, sexy, gimmicky, glamorous, and big business, stressing its everyday commonplace values. He said the pop artist should be completely immersed in pop culture, movies, television, magazines, and music, bridging the gap between high art and commercialism. Taking influence from Dadaism, the core ideologies and practices of pop art include depicting the universal language of the commodity, blurring the lines between high art and low culture, and mass producing their work just like a product. Demna Vasalia, now rebranded as Demna, is arguably the most relevant fashion designer of our generation. Starting his career after interning at Margiela with the streetwear label Vetements, he is now at the top of the luxury industry as the creative director of Balenciaga. Demna is the quintessential pop artist of the modern age. He embodies the raw ethos of the 20th century pop artist in all of his work, contradicting the expectations of how a high fashion creative should design. Much like the pop artist during the rise to fame, his work has angered traditionalists due to how severely it contrasts with the standard of luxury design. Demna has been able to remain relevant and mainstream while still being anti-fashion by sticking to pop art's fundamentals. Demna's first international headline was in 2016 when he sent a young Gosha Rubchinsky down the Paris catwalk in a t-shirt with the DHL logo on it. He sold these DHL t-shirts for about $200 each and they sold out with resale three times the retail price. The shirts were almost identical to the uniforms actual DHL employees wore, except for a small Vetement logo on the back. Obviously, this caused an uproar in the media because this was one of the first times something like this had happened in the luxury fashion industry. Critics saw this done as a scam. How dare he show such a prosaic design in Paris amongst the beautifully crafted collections designers worked so hard to produce? What dignity did he have, swindling his loyal fan base? When asked about this in 2016, Demna said, we give existing pieces new life. DHL seemed to be more a part of my life than anything else, so I thought, why isn't it in the show? This was the exact reasoning of the pop artists for depicting such common, trite subjects in their works. In an interview with Andy Warhol on why he started his Campbell Soup Works, he said, I used to drink it. I used to have the same lunch every day for 20 years. I guess, the same thing over and over again. Everyone knows Campbell's Soup, and everyone knows DHL. No matter our background, we are unified by our intimate connections with these entities as consumers. The same way Warhol gave the soup can a new life as high art, Demna did the DHL uniform as high fashion. After the hype of this piece, consumers who couldn't afford the Venomont version flocked to buy actual DHL shirts off eBay and their website. I was one of them. Now at Balenciaga, he still keeps these values. 
from the models to the references to the pieces on the runway. In an interview on his Autumn Winter 2019 show with Vogue, he said, It's my ode to the consumer, to people who actually go shopping for fashion. Because of course, this is the reason I do it. It's real. When I'm on the streets of Paris, this is what I see. A good example of this is Look 60-74 through 74 in Balenciaga's Autumn Winter 2018 collection, where models wore coats made of an array of various different outerwear pieces, much like how people on the streets haphazardly layer up to battle the cold weather. It's a raw reflection of how people dress. It's not pretentious. Demna is taking styles true to human nature, styles the average consumer is familiar with, and putting a frame around them. This is also exemplified in a quote from an interview he did with Heist Nabiety in 2018 where he said, What is different about my point of view is pragmatism. The fashion world isn't the real world, and my aesthetic is a kind of hyper-realism. I'm not interested in trying to live in some kind of dream and be bored to death. Jasper Johns, one of the most prolific American pop artists, did a piece in 1964 called Ale Cans, where he recreated two Ballantine Ale Cans. He casted the cans of bronze and hand-painted them. Next to a regular $2 Ballantine Ale Can, you would hardly tell that this was a priceless work of art. Johns illustrated in this work a key theme of pop art, inverting monumentality by bridging high and low culture. The monumentality of a bronze sculpture that would be sold at Sotheby's for exuberant prices is contrasted by its subject, the common beer can, something anyone could buy at the corner store. It's anti-art. Demna takes this same principle by remaking clothing worn by the average consumer in high quality materials and placing a high price tag on them. He does this time and time again, like the Balenciaga Crocs, the Balenciaga Ikea bags, and all the Balenciaga pieces that look lifted straight out of a souvenir shop in the airport. A famous example is his iconic Triple S sneakers that debuted in Autumn Winter 2017, which harken the chunky sneakers sold at discount stores and worn primarily by people outside of the fashion sphere. They have three soles stacked on top of each other and were made in Italy out of high quality materials. They sold out everywhere. Afterwards, there was a surge of popularity in Nike Monarchs, Skechers, Filas, and other chunky dad shoes that were seen as ugly just prior to the Triple S debut. This design process of glamorizing the banal is in all his collections. For his most recent collection, SS23, he debuted his collaboration with Adidas, which consisted of logo hoodies, t-shirts, and tracksuits. Most of the show featured high-quality versions of pieces you could buy from the Adidas outlet store. Some looks recontextualized the triple stripe logo on a suit, heavyweight denim, and luxury leather bags. Like Jasper John's ale cans, if you place this collection next to a wardrobe of classic Adidas silhouettes and look from far away, you wouldn't tell that one costs 10 times the amount of the other. Conceptually, this critiques our conception of luxury, a word Demna redefines season after season. Balenciaga remains at the forefront of fashion because each year it reflects the current pop culture and social climate of the time. From the 2017 Bernie Sanders campaign t-shirts, to their PlayStation 5 pieces, to their Fortnite collab, to their Simpsons runway, to their work with Kanye and various other celebrities, and to their representation of current world events such as the COVID pandemic and the invasion of Ukraine, Balenciaga is always in the headlines. This is what the pop artists did, and it's a big reason why they became so popular. Andy Warhol became a celebrity by using celebrities as the subject of his works. Using tabloid photographs or publicity shots for his screen prints, Warhol produced an impressive number of celebrity portraits, including Elvis Presley, Mick Jagger, Elizabeth Taylor, Jackie Kennedy, Marilyn Monroe, Yves Saint Laurent, Dolly Parton, and hundreds more. Warhol made his Marilyn works immediately after her passing, when you couldn't read a newspaper without seeing headlines about her. Despite the sorrows surrounding this tragedy, Warhol became synonymous with Marilyn and thus American culture as a whole. Demna does the same. His work at Balenciaga is a mirror that pop culture stares directly into, and as a result, Balenciaga becomes the pop culture. Balenciaga also employs Dadaism frequently in its designs, which is often the concept behind its more controversial creations. Dadaism is the movement that was the precursor to pop art and used absurdity and humor to satirize the art community. Dadaists sought to create an emotional reaction in the viewer by making art that mocked the notion of how art should be. A key example of this is Marcel Duchamp's ready-mades. For the most part, they were just everyday objects presented as is in museums or altered ever so slightly. It was almost impossible for him to get his work exhibited because people thought it was ridiculous and an insult to the institution of high art. His most famous works include Fountain, which is just a used urinal, Prelude to a Broken Arm, which is just a snow shovel, and Bicycle Wheel, which is just a bicycle wheel mounted upside down to a stool. Demna's work often harkens these Dada's principles at its most absurd. 
Balenciaga recently released the Paris sneaker, which is essentially an absolutely tarnished pair of Converse with Balenciaga written in Sharpie on the outsole. As you can see in the comments under this post about the release, people were outraged. Of course they would be. I mean, Demno wants them to be. He's making a mockery of the luxury sneaker industry, much like Duchamp did the art community. He's selling shoes you would find at the dumpster for $1,800. No matter how ridiculous the media thinks this is, I'm sure people will buy them. Then, who's the real fool? Some people hate the way Demna designs clothes and directs his brand, but this is expected. A large majority of art critics and enthusiasts today still consider Andy Warhol a hack or a sellout. I totally understand why they feel this way. I mean, Demna is essentially critiquing consumerism by copying it and profiting off it. But as I've illustrated in this video, conceptually his decisions are consistent, have artistic merit analogous to the pop art movement in the 70s, and thus demand respect. I'm not sure if Demna is consciously following the doctrine of pop art or if he just naturally works within its values. In the 50s we had post-war consumerism, and today we have post-pandemic consumerism. After the EDD and cryptocurrency boom, my generation received enough money to buy luxury items, and this is perfect for Demna because the pop culture he reflects is our culture. Balenciaga is as much a part of our culture as Fortnite or Kanye West. It has embedded itself into pop culture and it's only cementing itself in.